Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation. We have sine x plus cosine x equals cosine of 2x. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods and we'll talk about the possibility of a third method. All right, so let's start with the first one. For my first method, I'm going to do what is kind of like more typical. I'm going to set these equal to each other and square both sides. And the reason behind squaring both sides is the presence of sine x plus cosine x. Whenever you see sine x plus minus cosine x, you, to, you should square both sides if you can't do anything else. Because that gives you uh, good things. First of all, this gives us sine squared x plus cosine squared x plus 2 sine x cosine x. And the right hand side is just a perfect square. Now sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So that's why we are squaring both sides. And not only that, this gives us the double angle formula for sine. If you remember, that's equivalent to sine 2x. Now why is this helpful? Because sine and cosine are related, again, by the same reason, for the same reason uh, by the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, we can write cosine squared as 1 minus sine squared. And that's a huge improvement, right? Especially given that we have 1 on the left-hand side, they're going to cancel out. Great, so we can basically convert sine squared into cosine squared and vice versa easily. Now, go, let's go ahead and cancel these ones out and put these two together. So we have now sine 2x plus sine squared 2x equals 0. Now, how do you solve this equation? Easy, by factoring. Since we have a common factor, which is sine 2x, we can take it out. And 1 plus sine 2x will be the other factor. And now we have the zero product property. And this tells us that, hey, sine 2x can be 0. And what is that supposed to mean? Think about it. It just means that 2x is a multiple of pi. Even or odd doesn't matter because if you think about the unit circle, on the unit circle, uh, integer multiples of pi always gives you always give you a 0 at sign. Okay? So from here, we can divide both sides by 2 and write x values as n pi over 2. Don't forget n is an integer, right? This gives us four values. Let's go ahead and write list them because why is listing them important? You'll see. If n is equal to zero, you can also use negative values, but I rather keep it positive. And a lot of times people, uh, the, problems is gonna, the problem is gonna ask for values between zero and two pi uh, when zero is included or two pi is one of them is included. Anyways, if n is zero, we get zero. If n is one, pi over 2, and then we get pi, and then 3 pi over 2. So kind of like the, the corners, right, on the unit circle. Wait a minute. We just said sine 2x is equal to 0 at those two values, but then we got different values for x. What is that supposed to mean? Well, you have to be careful. Because we did square both sides, that could introduce extraneous solutions. So what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to check them. Okay, with the original equation. So let's go ahead and plug these into the original equation. And you'll soon realize that 0 and 3 pi over 2 work, but pi over 2 and pi do not satisfy the original equation, which is this one. Make sense? So we have to discard them. They just creep in because of squaring both sides. Notice that if you have 1 equals negative 1, which is false, you can square both sides and get 1 equals 1, which is true. And I think in one of my recent videos, we talked about this logical principle. You can start with something false and get something true as a result. Anyway, so that's one branch that gave us two solutions between 0 and 2 pi. And now we're going to look at the other piece, which gives us sine 2x equals negative 1. And what does that mean? It just means that where, where is sine negative 1? If you think about the unit circle again, you see how important the unit circle is, sine is going to be negative 1 at 3 pi over 2, in other words, 270 degrees. So we can kind of set the 2x equal to 2 pi, over, I mean 3 pi over 2, but don't forget to add multiples of 2 pi. 2 pi k or 2 k pi, doesn't matter, same thing. Now divide both sides by 2, that's going to give you x equals 3 pi over 4 plus k pi. Okay, this 
kind of changes the picture a little bit because we're, we're going to have 3 pi over 4, and if k is 1, we're going to get 7 pi over 4. And guess what happens when you plug these in? Again, you have to test them. They both work. So we're going to take both of the solutions, and you can definitely see for yourself. Okay? So this is basically the first method, squaring both sides, and then just using some identities. This is where we get. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. For my second method, I'm going to go ahead and write the formula for cosine 2x because I have cosine 2x on the right hand side. Remember the original problem? Sine x plus cosine x is equal to cosine of 2x. So now I'm going to replace cosine 2x with cosine squared x minus sine squared x because as you know, there are three formulas for cosine 2x and this is one of them. This is actually the main one because the other ones are derivations of this which is obtained by replacing cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared or sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared. You see, if you know where the formulas come from, you don't all have to memorize them, but you have to memorize some. Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and replace the cosine 2x on the right-hand side with this. That's going to give us cosine squared x. Actually, let me keep the left-hand side on the left-hand side. So sine x plus cosine x equals cosine of 2x, which is cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Awesome. Now, Cosine squared x minus sine squared x is a difference of two squared. That's what's really nice about cosine of 2x because it can always be written as cosine plus sine multiplied by cosine minus sine. And that equals cosine uh, plus sine. I'm just going to switch them around so it kind of fits the form on the right hand side. Now, what can I do with this equality? And you're probably immediately thinking, cancel these out. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Because again, just like you introduce extraneous solutions by squaring both sides, you'll be losing some of the solutions, right? That would be really sad, wouldn't it? So let instead, let's go ahead and take this guy as a quantity and put it on the right-hand side. The reason why I put everything on the right-hand side is because, actually, no big deal, but I want to, uh, there's more terms, okay? So I want to do the following. Cosine x plus sine x multiplied by cosine x minus sine x, and I'm going to subtract 1 times cosine x plus sine x from this, which is this one, right? This is 1 times that. And that's going to equal 0. Awesome. Now, notice that cosine x plus sine x is equal to 0, right? Well, I shouldn't say that first. I meant it's a common factor. So take out cosine x plus sine x, and then the other factor is going to be cosine minus sine minus 1. Remember, you have to cover this one and this one, and whatever is left, that's going to be the other factor. And of course, set it equal to 0. From here, we get two things. Cosine x plus sine x is equal to 0. We can basically write this as sine x is equal to negative cosine x. Given that cosine x won't be 0, and cosine, if cosine is 0, sine will be 1 or negative 1, obviously, it's not going to satisfy. So we can easily divide both sides by cosine. That gives us tangent x equals negative 1. And as you should know, again, the unit circle comes up. Uh, tangent can be 1 here and here. That's where tangent is 1. And this is where tangent is negative 1. Make sense? So in other words, this, this goes like this. Pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You get the idea? Those are the multiples of pi over 4. And of course, in this case, we're talking about 3 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. And notice that at the end of the first method, we got these exact same thing as they satisfy the original equation. The other one is going to give us cosine x minus sine x equals 1. So you can square both sides and come up with some solutions, but again, extraneous solutions might come in. Instead, let's do the following. Think about it. How can the difference of cosine and sine be 1? The maximum value for cosine is 1, so I can't exceed it. So cosine can be 1 when sine is 0, which is possible, we know from Pythagorean theorem, or cosine can be 0 and sine can be negative 1. Those are the only two cases, and this gives us 0 and 3 pi over 2. So we didn't get any extraneous solutions because we didn't square both sides. We just went straight with the identities, which is kind of like a safer method, but we got the exact same solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.